Hi, I'm Charlie with Precision Matthews, and today we're going to look at probably the simplest machine we sell, the humble leveling foot. It seems simple, but there's some clever design there that I want to talk about, and some questions that people sometimes have that I want to clear up. Let's get started. When you think about leveling feet, the design that is most familiar to most people is something like this. Usually, the foot screws into threads in whatever it's leveling, you screw it in or out to make it taller or shorter, and the weight of the unit simply rests on the threads of the screw. There's almost always a jam nut that keeps it from moving once you get it where you like it, and that's all there is to know. But today, we're talking about the fancy rubber vibration damping version, like these. We have one cabinet of a PM1228 stand here to demonstrate. Why a 1228 stand? because it's compatible with these feet, and it was the most accessible with the least amount of forklift Tetris at the time of filming. The main difference between these feet and the plain Jane screw style is that with these, the weight of the machine is on the body of the foot rather than the threads of the screw. The stud that goes in the top is not weight bearing. Well, at least not directly. It's just to expand or contract the height of the foot when it comes time to level your machine and the hole in the stand that the stud goes through is not threaded. It's just a straight drilled access hole. People sometimes take a minute to grasp that the foot itself expands when the stud is tightened. It's easy to see when I set up this dial indicator to measure the height of the surface of the pad. As I crank the stud clockwise, the top of the pad raises. In this video, I raise it about 200 thou and the maximum range is around a half an inch. That's more than enough to take up variation in all but the jankiest concrete floors. And if you need more than that, you can always shim below the pad. With that in mind, just a few cranks gets me to the middle of a carpenter's level. And that's a good starting point when you're setting up a machine. I don't worry about a machinist level until I actually get the machine on the stand. Once you do get to the machinist level, the thread on the stud is such that you can get some very fine adjustments. If my math is correct, on a 1.7 millimeter thread pitch, one quarter turn of the stud is just over 17 thou of vertical change. Yell at me in the comments if that's not right. When we're happy with the position of the feet, we add the fender washers and lock nuts to keep them in place. When you get them tight, you are required to say under your breath, that ain't going nowhere. I'll mention that we also have a version of these leveling feet with extended 80 millimeter long studs, and those fit most knee mills. You can also provide your own stud if your application calls for it, as you can use any M12 by 1.75 millimeter bolt or threaded rod. So if you have access from the top and bolts long enough, it doesn't matter how thick the castings are these leveling feet will work. Now for a science experiment. I believe it was Mythbusters host, science educator, and owner of a PM728 VT bench mill, Adam Savage, who said something like, the only difference between screwing around and science is writing it down. Now I'm not much of a salesman, but my best sales pitch for our PM712G bandsaw is this. If you own a bandsaw, you can cut stuff in half. Want to see a cross section of this leveling foot? Yeah, so do I. And I have a bandsaw. The world holds many secrets, but hidden knowledge is available to a man with a bandsaw and the willingness to cut things in half. And here it is. You can see that the stud screws into the threads, pushes on that bearing plate, and deforms the outside of the elastomer to make the foot taller or shorter. The rubber on the bottom is essentially a fancy shaped hockey puck. Maybe a hair softer than a hockey puck, but whatever the exact durometer reading, these feet really do a good job of damping and isolating vibration from whatever machine is on top of them. For fun, I went one level further and pried that fancy hockey puck and the bearing plate free from the top plate, so here's that shot. And I have to say, that is really in there. I'm glad we did the prying part off camera to keep the language in this video family friendly. 
I think it's a combination of the shape of the rubber part and some amazing adhesive, but I can pretty well guarantee these two pieces are never coming apart unless you really want them to. At this point, we've sold thousands of these, and I don't think I've ever had to warranty one. Of course, I probably jinxed it just then, but if one ever fails, I really want to know how, so call me. So there you have it. You probably never thought I'd have so much to say about such a simple part. But I hope you had as much fun watching as I did tearing one apart. As always, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments or contact us by phone or email. Until next time, thanks for watching.